And this brings me to my next guest, whom I discovered recently. Uh, Hari, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Shama. Hi. So, the thing is, Hari is a uh, he is just an individual okay and they have somehow you know i i read that uh, he and his apartment friends have actually managed to recycle water from the kitchens bathrooms and toilets first of all hari is this true yes it's true very much true and we started this journey sometime in 2007 so we live in a large apartment complex in the heart of chennai city in southern india and uh, so we realized we are big consumers of uh, resources including water and uh, yeah so yes it's very much true this is this is very interesting now why didn't you wait for the government to do something uh haven't we all waited <laughs> <laughs> yeah so See, the thing want- is what we realized is uh, the government was very strained in terms of resources uh, we didn't want to be cynical about it so everyone accuses abuses the governments everywhere so it was important that we try doing something ourselves we did here we looked at we checked with policy we checked with the, you know what was going on it was all positive but nothing on the ground so we decided a few of us who uh, were thinking about uh, you know water uh, in the future how do we get water so the thing is we are a large apartment complex with uh, at any point of time a minimum of 500 people in our community i'll start okay. your slides i think because you tell me how to move here send me a few slides this looks yes. like a we can we can wait here, this slide for now so the garden that you see uh, we have a large garden we have 175 apartments and we have a large garden also a lot of open space and so this garden is entirely maintained by the waste that is composted waste water which is treated so uh, we have good greenery but it all comes from uh, what is composted and what is recycled in terms of water so since we are a large community in the heart of the city we are large consumers of resources uh, water being a big part and we are also l- large waste generators yes different types of waste yes. uh, it can be kitchen waste recycle waste water waste you know toilet everything bathroom so we said we should try doing something and along the way if the governments you know things get uh, you know we have clarity in policy clarity in whatever purpose uh, we can align ourselves but we should get started it helped that a few of us were like minded and we could start thinking about it and uh, we just took the initiative and said let's do because until until then it was we were celebrating you know festivals together we were doing things together having a nice time you know all that was fine but then beyond that we need to, to move on so we said let's work on some of these things where there is going to be a lot of pressure so and we did not wait for the government that's how we got started that's great how many people are in this complex finally i mean kids uh, old people everybody included yeah at any point of time because there are 175 apartments there are people you know who are leaving there are people who are coming or whatever at any point of time we are a minimum of 500 and goes up to 800 people okay. in this community and how many were you who decided to sort of change things uh we were four of us okay so- the four of us who got started and it helped that uh, they were aware they were uh, reading they were looking at things that were happening and i think that's when the even conversations and things were starting even different even amongst the governments amongst around the world on climate change on waste disposal on various things there was a lot of conversation and we said let's try doing something so in 2007 we started with the uh, you know uh, source segregation we started with the gray water recycling so the water which comes out of our bathrooms uh we decided we'll filter it we'll do a small it's not very uh, you know technology intensive just a simple filtration process and we used it for our garden because 
Uh, Chennai was at a point where there was acute water shortage and almost every apartment complex house was buying water from outside. Tanker trucks were being used to transport water for households. And so we said, you know, it, so it looked criminal to be using water for the garden. And a lot of people were, you know, including the corporation were telling us not to use water for the garden. There were advertisements, notices and also we decided let's do something to reduce our water usage. And so we started using the grey water, that is water from the bathroom. From there, you can go to the next slide. So even to use this grey water, the water for the plants, we decided to use a drip irrigation system. It helped that I'm a farmer. And uh, as you know, farmers have to be innovative. You have to make do with minimum resources. Uh, you have to be everything on a farm. So we implemented this uh, drip irrigation system to deliver the recycled water for our gardens. From there, see, initially it was, uh, it was hard I'm, you know, to get people involved and all. But as we started seeing some success, see, once we started using, uh, recycling this water in the garden and also our composting initiatives and all that, we started seeing some success. So from having a little resistance from different people in our own community, people started, uh, you know, there was a buy-in. People started liking the idea that we were doing this. And there were also economic benefits to this. It was not just a feel-good thing. So while initially it was feel-good, then people started seeing, because our maintenance bills were slowly coming down, little by little. So we went into this RO water. We have a reverse osmosis for drinking water. So because our water is hard, and uh, sometimes with impurities. So we have this reverse osmosis. The discharge from this was pumped into the sewage. And we realized that we were putting a lot of pressure on the sewage system in our municipality because we as a large apartment complex were uh, the single biggest generators of different types of waste. And the municipality and its old system was not geared to handle this from a single source. So we said, let's try doing something, reduce the pressure on them. The discharge from the RO water was recycled, filtered, and we used it in the flushing tanks, the toilets. And, and then so slowly the success built on. And then over a period, then we decided that when there was an acute water shortage, and uh, we also envisaged that there will come a point where, you know, water itself could be you know, hard to get. They may come a time. And COVID told us that food was a problem at some point. And so there was a lot of resistance to the sewage treatment plant project that we put up in 2018. Why, and, why was there resistance, Hari? Uh, for us as a community, it was uh, expensive. People felt like exactly you asked, why should we do it? It's the government's job. Let them do it. And uh, do we need to spend so much money? What is the use of this? It's just a few people feeling good about it. They want to do it just to show that they are, you know, achieving something. So we had to convince them that it is not just a feel good thing. Uh, they could come a time that getting water itself in your apartment complex could be difficult. So at that point of time, when you don't have water in your flush tanks, you're not going to look at the cost of water. You'll just need water at any cost. And that is what we're getting ready for. We don't yes. know when that will happen. It can happen yes. after 10 years. It can happen after 15 years. So, and thing is, the good thing is we got started early because it took us three years to stabilize this project because we found that while there were people on paper uh, doing this for residential apartments, for commercial establishment, we found there was no one who had done it in our city uh, for a residential apartment. So there were a lot of challenges, including how the pipelines were laid out, what kind of uh, waste was, you know, uh, treated, uh, pressure, uh, you know, input, output, a lot of, it took a lot of time and COVID didn't help, of course. Uh, <laughs> we have stabilized this now. It is working well. Uh, we use, we reuse about 15,000 liters of treated water every day. Uh, this this goes into the, again, uh, uh, cistern tanks. And uh, so, through all these initiatives, uh, we are able to save or reuse somewhere between 650 to 700,000 liters of water in a month in our apartment complex. 
And what we are working on now is, see, this was not a, it's just a group of individuals who wanted to do something. And so it was not very well thought out and we didn't have a grand plan. So what we are doing now, because each of these was a small, small project. So when we started the gray water cycling, we never even thought of the sewage treatment plant. None of us had any idea about it. So, but as the momentum built up in the, built up in the community, we were able to get buy-ins. We were able to get more people to participate and people started seeing the results. So today what we are doing is we're integrating all the Shamat's uh, updates and from the last time we spoke. Now, because each, each of these is an individual, gray water recycling, the RO water discharge being treated and the sewage treatment. So now we are integrating this and making it one treated water, uh, you know, in terms of the pipelines and things like that, so that they're not individual projects. So that's where we are. That's what we have done. Yes. This is, thank you so much again. Very, very inspiring. 